What's up guys, I'm Chirag and welcome to part 2 of the tutorial series on AWS Cloud Formation. So in this tutorial, we are going to get started with templates in AWS Cloud Formation. So uh, let's get started with the very basic template to create the S3 bucket. So here, as you can see on my screen, I have defined this template and this template is basically in uh, YAML, right? So we have the YAML formatting, right? So we are not using those curly braces and the uh, double quotes for the key value pair, right? So that's YAML. If you want, you can also define this template uh, using JSON formatting, right? So I'm going to opt out for the YAML. So let's get started. So I will take you through the template that we have. It's basically the eight lines of uh, template, right? So the very first line says AWS template format version and its value is 2010.09.09, right? So basically this is the optional field. If you don't define AWS template format version, it will by default consider the latest value that is 2010.09.09, right? So basically uh, AWS template format version defines or identifies the capabilities of template and the latest template format version is uh, 2010.09.09, right? And it is the only valid value. So keep this thing in mind while you are defining uh, the format version. And as I mentioned, if you don't define AWS template format version, then it will assume the latest template format version by default, right? So that's basically the line number one. Now moving to the line number two, that is description. Again, description is optional, right? And here we can define a short note on what is this template about. So that's a description. On line number four, uh, we have resources. Now under resources, we have to define all the resources that we want to create. So in my case, I want to create the S3 bucket. So that's where I have defined the information or I have mentioned the information regarding the S3 bucket. Now, for example, I also want to create the Lambda function. Then I will do something like this. Lambda create, right? Colon type and its properties, right? And so on. So that's where I can define multiple resources. But for now, we will stick to only one resource. That is the S3 bucket that we want to create. So now under resources on line number five, we have the logical ID or we can say the logical name of the resources, right? So in my case, I have defined S3 bucket, but it can be anything uh, you want to define, right? So you can give any other name you want, but it should be alphanumeric and should be unique within the template, right? So for example, I'm creating this bucket that is SRC CD hyphen CF. And then I also want to create another bucket. And if I go ahead and define the same logical name, right? Then it's going to throw an error. So I have to define something else. Maybe I can say S3 bucket one, something like this, right? So you can't reuse the logical ID or the logical name uh, within the template, right? So it should be unique and it can be anything, but just make sure that if anyone go through the template, then uh, he or she can understand that what is that resource about, right? So that's logical ID or the logical name you can say. Now, then we have type followed by the logical ID or the name. So basically uh, within type, we define the type of resource, right? So let me comment this. This is logical ID slash name. And then we have type. So here we basically define the type of resource, right? So that's basically the S3 bucket. Why S3 bucket? Because I want to create the S3 bucket. That's where I need to define AWS S3 bucket. Now, for example, uh, if I were to uh, create Lambda function, then the type would be AWS Lambda something else, right? So that will be the syntax instead of AWS S3 bucket, right? So you have to define the type uh, based on what type of resource uh, that you want to create. So that's type. Now uh, type is followed by the properties, right? So here within properties, I have defined the bucket name, right? So I want to create the bucket with this name, right? But apart from bucket name, there are a lot many properties that you can define. So for example, you want to define access control for that bucket or and, and so on, right? So that's where you can define everything in the properties, right? So this is all about the creation of the S3 bucket. 
Now, uh, it seems like it's hard to remember these properties, this AWS colon colon S3 colon colon bucket and these properties and syntax, right? So it looks hard. So guys, uh, you don't need to remember everything. All you need to do is go to the documentation. So I have this link open, just go to this documentation, right? And here we have the list of services or the resources that is supported by the uh, AWS cloud formation. So let's take an example of S3 bucket itself. So let me search for the S3 service, right? So here I have this Amazon S3. So yeah, uh, before we move on, uh, once you uh, navigate to the documentation, uh, just go to template references and expand the resource and property reference, right? Within that you will find all the resources or the services. Right now, uh, moving along. So we have defined Amazon S3, just navigate to that service. So for example, you want to create the Lambda function, then uh, just click on the uh, Lambda function service or resource, right? Now here we have three types within resource that is AWS S3 access point, S3 bucket and S3 bucket policy, right? So here we are creating the bucket. So we will select AWS S3 bucket. So click on that. And now here you can see we have all the properties over here, right? That you can define uh, under that properties uh, tab, right? Like access control, as I mentioned, bucket encryption, course configuration and so on. So here you will get all the example below, right? So all you need to come back here, uh, look at the properties that you want to define. You don't need to remember any syntax or anything, right? So you can simply uh, copy and paste and here you will get an option of JSON as well as YAML. So you can use whichever formatting that you want, right? So for example, uh, you want to define course configuration. So come over here, Click on this course configuration, it will take you there. And here uh, you have the description and what all parameters you can define, right? So you can also uh, look out for example, I think. Right, so here there is an example that is enable course uh, cross origin resource sharing, right? So you can define something like this, even it is in YAML. So uh, all I want to say is that you don't need to remember everything, just come over here look for it and copy and paste, but don't just copy and paste. Uh, but also I want you to understand uh, what is happening, right? So yeah, that's the point. So now uh, this is how you can uh, go ahead and define the template, right? You can get started. So I have this template. Now we will go ahead to AWS cloud formation service and we are going to upload this uh, template and we will create a stack. Right, so if you remember from the previous tutorial, then template in action is basically a stack. So let's have a look. So navigate to AWS Management Console, look for Cloud Formation Service. Now, once you are there within Cloud Formation Console, click on this three lines from the top left corner, click on Stacks. Now here, uh, click on Create Stack. Now here, as a step one, we have three options. That is template is ready, use a sample template or create template in designer. So we have the template ready. So we will select the first option. Now within specified template, uh, whether your template is uploaded on Amazon S3 bucket, no. So do you want to upload a template? Yes, so we will select the second option and we will say choose a file. I will select S3 underscore bucket dot YAML. And once it is uploaded, you will get the S3 URL over here, right? So you can access that template from here or you can also view that template in designer, right? So now click on next. In step two, uh, we need to give this tag name. So I will say S3 create, right? Now here within parameters, we don't have anything because we have not defined the parameters, right? So now click on next. So it says uh, stack name must contain only letters numbers. So let's say S3 create and click on next. Now here, if you want, you can define a tag. You can give a permission if it is required, right? And we will leave rest of the option as it is. And we will click on next. Now here you need to review all the configuration that you have defined. You can also uh, click on this estimate cost for the resources. So it will take you to the uh, S3 calculator, I think, right? So about, and you can calculate the costing over there. 
And once you are done with the review, you can say create stack. And now the stack is being created. So let's refresh it. So as you can see, you can see the full progress, right? That it is in progress, resource creation initiated. Now, as you can see, uh, the creation is complete. And now we can actually navigate to S3 bucket and have a look at the bucket. So what was the name of the bucket? That is bucket name is SRCECDE hyphen CF. So let me sort by date created. And as you can see here, we have the bucket that is SRCECDE hyphen CF, right? And that is being created by the cloud formation template. Now, the good thing is that uh, we can delete this tag and it will also revert all the changes. It will also delete all the resources that uh, this template has created, right? So you can basically roll back everything. Now, it seems like uh, here we don't have or we don't know which resources are created, right? And it becomes hard to locate the resource specifically. So to uh, make it easier, we can define outputs within the template, right? So here, if I look at the outputs, I don't have anything. I can't uh, locate the resource from here. I can't see the resources uh, within the cloud formation console itself. So I need to go to S3 bucket and I need to look for that name specifically, and then I can locate that resource, right? But what if we want to see those output on the uh, cloud formation screen itself? So for that, we need to define the outputs and the output of that outputs uh, will be visible over here, right? So at this point of time, we don't have any output. So what we will do is uh, we will delete this template. We will delete this tag, right? So say delete, delete stack. It will delete the bucket that it has created, right? So deletion is in progress and the stack has been deleted successfully, right? As you can see in the left panel, no stacks to display. Now what we will do is we will go back to the template and here we will define outputs, right? Caller, let me do one thing, chain space to four, okay. And within outputs, uh, again, it will be followed by the logical name. So I can say bucket name or something like that, right? and what value I want to display in the outputs, right? So I will say value colon what I want to display. I want to refer the value of the S3 bucket that is on line number five, right? So what I will do is I will say exclamation ref that is for reference single quote. I will define the logical ID of the S3 bucket that is S3 bucket over here, right? And if you want, you can add a description over here. So basically, if you want to get the physical ID of any resource, then you can use exclamation ref that is for reference followed by the logical ID of that resource, right? So here the logical ID of the S3 bucket is S3 bucket, right? So that's what uh, we have defined. So we will cover more scenario in terms of outputs in the upcoming tutorials, right? So for now, uh, this is outputs, right? So what we will do is again, we will go back to the cloud formation uh, console. We will say create stack. Again, we are going to upload that YAML file or the template file. And we will say next, give a stack name. I will say S1, for example. Say next, next, right? Review everything. So before I go ahead and click on create stack, let me show you that this bucket has been deleted. Let me reload this. So if I search for SRC -E -C -D -E, I don't have any bucket with that name, right? So basically the bucket has been deleted. So now we will go back to cloud formation. I will say create stack. Now the creation is in progress. So as you can see, uh, the creation is completed. Now if I click on outputs, then I should be able to see the name, right? That is bucket name as 
this one right and I can simply I think there should be a link for that resource but it's not so as you can see here we have the bucket right and here it is so well uh, that's all i wanted to cover in this tutorial and as usual if you want me to do tutorial on any use case or service then please leave them below and i will try my best to come up with a tutorial as soon as possible and if you have any queries or comments then again please leave them below and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and see you next time